Hello, hopefully everybody had lunch, and after the lunch, yeah, Boyan is handing out shots. Actually, we should have said that on the, on the, on the description, and we had a lot of people here, free shots. But you're lucky enough to get the shots since you're here. Um, we're gonna introduce uh, European hot market. Is it that hot? Yes, it is. It's uh, the new thing, and there's new touring roads and everything is on there. And we have, yeah, we have five different countries from East Europe. We have a lot of people from Eastern Europe here on the festival, and we are really thankful for that, and that's really exciting and new. Also, quite many bands from Eastern Europe. But I will let them introduce themselves, actually. So we starting with... Uh, hi, my name is Greg, and I represent... Uh, a, a production which is a management and booking agency from Poland. We are here with one of our artists. We are, you are very much invited to see him tonight at 7 p.m. at the Strand. Um, we've been on the market uh, actually uh, very shortly because uh, two years, two and a half years, something around that, but both Kuba, my, my partner, and myself have a very long history working in the music industry. Uh, Kuba more as a booker and musician, me more as a manager and with a record label background. But we decided to uh, share our experiences and um, it's working very well right now. Hello, I, I'm Dan, I come from Romania. I, uh, I am part of uh, the uh, team that organizes uh, Mastering the Music Business, which is a um, music business conference the, and also a showcase festival. We are nearing our fifth edition, uh, which will be at the end of March 2020. I am also a radio DJ at the number one radio station in Romania. I am an artist manager and a booking agent, and I am a music industry blogger and podcaster. And the moderator on Live at Heart. Yes, and moderator at Live at Heart. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Hello, I'm Martin. I'm from Vilnius, Lithuania. Uh, I'm founder and heat promoter at uh, Eight Days a Week Agency. Uh, we are working with uh, high profile artists, and I even did a lot of acts from Sweden in my country, from Fever A, Licky Lee, to um, uh, Jose Gonzalez shows in, in, in Vilnius. And I also manager of one Lithuanian band which was awarded by Best Alternative Band of Lithuania this year. It called it Golden Parasite. So that's it about me. Hi, uh, my name is Peter I'm from Budapest, Hungary. I run my own uh, label and management company called AMPM Music. I've got two artists here performing tonight. So if you want to come down to Makariat Magashinat, we run at 7 at 11. Sorry for the plug. Uh, I also represent uh, Music Managers Forum Hungary and I am part of the team uh, who was just recently working on getting the Hungarian Impala organization for independent labels off the ground. We've done that now. It's called the Hail Hungarian Independent Labels, so uh, check us out sometime. Hi everybody, my name is Boyan, uh, or Robert as some people already know me by. Uh, I'm from Bulgaria, from Sofia. Uh, at the moment, I book a venue in Sofia called Joy Station. It's 2,000, 2,200 people. I used to be a promoter with the biggest promoter in the country for seven years, the local Live Nation partner with whom we've done uh, shows from 50 people to 60,000 people. And I have, no, I have no artist here. I'm just happy to be warming the seat and sharing some nice drinks with you guys. <laughs> so, uh we're starting to see the road is changing. Is it, um, are you also feeling that the roads are changing? I mean, most of the Swedish bands, if you go out here, they will say like, yeah, we're gonna do, more or less the joke was that we sent the bands to Germany to make the money. If you're not good enough for Sweden, you just went for Germany. Uh, but nowadays, I mean, the thing is that, that's also in our blood, but we're seeing that bands are starting to get, but do you feel it in, in the Eastern European countries that it starts changing? I can start it off. Uh, well, not as much. I mean, it, it's really genre specific for us. Uh, if it, Bulgaria is incredibly particular in that way that we have to rely on the audience adopting an artist before we can successfully promote it. 
And Bulgarians are very familiar with certain genres of music coming from uh, Sweden, especially heavy metal. Like, I'm wearing an Opeth t-shirt underneath my already excessively heavy metal outfit. And so anything else that we do has to be, has to have some sort of a synergy. The artist also has to know a little bit about the country that they're going to perform in. That's something that I've seen. Artists that are very successful in some territories are very unsuccessful in Bulgaria because they haven't been able to establish a rapport with the audience. Even saying a few words in the local language or playing like a melody that's very popular among the folks, that tends to solidify a rapport with the audience and you can actually start building something. If you just show up, even if you're very, very good and accepted in other countries, the audience will tend to say, okay, they're very good, but they obviously we don't care for them, they don't care for us. So the success stories that I've had with smaller bands starting at 50 to 250 capacity venue, that's, I'm afraid the venues are a scarcity and that's something probably other people will share from our territories, uh, is the, the bands that did a little bit of extra work. They came the day before, they handed out flyers, very old school. They learned a few words, they invited people from the local bar, and then you can get sort of something going, you can get a following. And then I can bring that band year after year and hopefully they can play you know, a bigger and bigger venue. What's, what's the main, uh, main uh, media that you will break artists? I mean, in Sweden, it's more or less if you're not on Spotify, you're not existing. But what is in Bulgaria right now? Is it newspapers, uh, TV, radio, yeah. uh, Spotify, online, YouTube? Spotify is still not uh, any kind of marker for success. Uh, most of the Spotify top 10 is local acts, local hip hop acts that only do stuff in the Bulgarian language. And they don't really mix with an international act that does anything in another language. Uh, television is still pretty strong. We're struggling to keep radio alive. They're working really, really hard, but that's falling off the wagon. As people say, we only listen to the radio in our car, and if you don't drive or if you don't have a car, that you miss it. So television, one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews, interviews that we have uh, one of our TV stations travel to a different country where the artist is performing before that, and they, they bring that report back to the Bulgarian media, and that pretty much all, all the time is kind of on us. We, the promoter, pays for that, for that privilege. Doesn't matter who the artist is, it might be Madonna, we still have to do that ourselves. Okay. Peter. Well, I guess uh, Hungary is maybe the best known for its festivals, especially Siget Festival. And of course, Siget has been uh, working a lot with uh, uh, programming uh, bands from all over the world and working with the likes of ETAP and uh, having specialist stages like the Europe stage, where you can uh, uh, get introduced to the Hungarian and the Siget audience, even if you're not from the US. But uh, also, in the recent years, we could see a bunch of smaller festivals springing up and uh, building themselves uh, up, uh, which are much more interested in versatile programming and uh, sort of specialist genres and specialist audiences. In terms of media, I would say Hungarian media landscape is uh, pretty grim <laughs> and very politicized, so we only have a few uh, programs on TV and radio, which is sort of out of the mainstream uh, pop, if you're talking about music. So I would say the most influential media is YouTube, actually. Uh, Spotify is present in the country of free, about 300,000 subscribe uh, Spotify users, but YouTube rules the day at the moment, and we've just uh, recently uh, started using YouTube music too, in a nutshell. Yes. Okay, uh, regarding media, it's really interesting that uh, Facebook is the main platform for any shows in Lithuania. Uh, posters, uh, radio, TV, it doesn't work. Just Facebook because the buzz on the internet is the main reason to come to the shows. And uh, I'm lucky because we have really, I would say, a really strong target audience which is following us, us and they even go to our shows because of our brand, which is quite strong in the past five years. And uh, we are really connected with national radio and TV, doing a lot of content projects together. They are even shooting our shows, uh, broadcasting uh, on, uh, on TV, on the radio, and so on. So this is our main, main platform to promote any act. It doesn't matter, 400 capacity or stadium. And uh, talking about the market, uh, I, I'm not the festival, I'm not the venue, I'm just a promoter who, who is doing uh, headline shows. So we decided to compete with festivals 
and started to do headline shows as outdoor event. So can you imagine the empty field where we put the stage from zero and do the festival production for one band? It doesn't matter, small or big, it's the same. We are using a really nice venue, I call it Botanical Garden, which you, I think you understand what, what does it mean, it's uh, nature, it's, everything is really nice and, and so on. So uh, I did all my summer shows at that venue and uh, big names such as Franz Ferdinand, Royal Blood, Father John Mystic came because of that idea to do headline shows between the festivals. And we are able to do a show on weekday, for example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it doesn't matter. It's, it works because of that target audience. And I'm, I'm lucky because people love that idea to do some kind of mini festival for a specific act. That's great. Uh, yes, let's then Dan. So, <clears throat> first of all, Romania is a country that has a population between 18 to 19 million people living in Romania right now. Um, we have about four to five major cities, and I'm going to refer to these as uh, the cultural scene is mostly in the big cities in Romania. Uh, festivals are a really big thing in our country. We've had over 100 festivals last year, and I think there would be some more than that in 2019. Um, there are some uh, multi-genre, very big festivals. One of the biggest in the world is called Untold. Um, they had about 90 to 100,000 entries a day for four days. It's in Transylvania, it's in Cluj. Uh, it has a smaller brother at the seaside, it's called Never See. Um, I think it surpassed 120,000 entries uh, this year. Uh, also Electric Castle, also in Transylvania, which is one of the best known uh, festivals around Europe. People have been talking about it for, for a, a long while. Um, <clears throat> And uh, also we have some very specialized festivals, jazz, heavy metal, um, and uh, so yeah, a lot, a lot of festivals from small to medium to big. Uh, as far as venues are concerned, uh, the situation is grim if you compare it to Western Europe, but um, to be realistic, it's getting better and better every year. Uh, we have had, uh, we have some wonderful venues in Bucharest, in Cluj, uh, in uh, Timisoara, Yash also is, uh, has a pretty good uh, scene concerning bands that can have a following of from starting from 50 to uh, maybe a 500 to 1,000 people. We are missing venues, and Boy and I, and I were talking about this, we're missing ven venues that are middle class, so to say, so there is no venue that can host an event of between two to 3,000 people. We just go from the small ones directly to the big ones, and I think this is, uh, this is something that we're lacking and we should be working on pretty soon. Um, the main uh, way to establish yourself as an artist in Romania is uh, radio, music, television, not so much, but YouTube. Uh, everybody looks at the numbers on YouTube, uh, even uh, the people who buy tickets, if, if th it's an artist they don't know, they will check out their Facebook, but they will check out their YouTube. Um, what Boyan said is also true for Romania. If people don't know the artist, they will not be curious to find out. Uh, and so doing the legwork yourself or having your promoter do that for you is also very important. Get people to like you, get people to know you, before you, you get to the venue, if you expect to announce it on your Facebook and have some posters in the city or in the, in the place that you're at the venue that you're playing and uh, have, uh, have a successful event, that won't work. Well, Poland is quite a large country, it's almost 40 million, and uh, actually uh, we have uh, about 300 cities, and each of these, these cities has a cultural center. Uh, which has a budget, and uh, uh, we also have quite a lot of festivals. Uh, the bigger ones are uh, Open Air in uh, Gdynia, which has won, as far as I remember, the best Open Air Festival Award in Eurosonic for two consecutive years, uh, or for example, the Off Festival in Katowice, or I would say the biggest uh, continental European festival, which is called Poland Rock. Um, we, uh, we have an enormous amount of, amount of clubs, 
And uh, as my friends uh, previously said, the, the main thing is to create a buzz around the artists. Uh, there, there are so many um, artists performing in Poland uh, currently that uh, if you don't create the buzz, and the main media is actually Facebook and YouTube, um, it's, it's really hard to, uh, to, to uh, bring an audience to, to a venue. But uh, uh, the, the interest is growing. Poland is very hungry for uh, new, new names, new artists, new kinds of music. Um, one of the most important channels, uh, actually, is, um, is the Polish uh, Radio 3 program, which is... Uh, uh, lately, it's been, unfortunately, very politically influenced, so it's losing listeners, but uh, still, the music programs there are the ones which uh, discover new names, uh, which uh, promote new, fresh music, uh, and it still is a very important media. Yeah, and when we were booking this festival, we got a lot of, lot of uh, submission from Eastern Europe also. So how is the export? Is like, is the, is the, do you feel that the market is ready to get out to, to the rest of the world? Start with you. Well, actually, to be honest, Poland was a little bit behind uh, because uh, the Polish Music Export Office has been opened in November last year only. Previously, there have been uh, quite a few successes, but uh, those were individual successes of the managers, the artists themselves, and uh, uh, we didn't have a kind of structure which uh, helped the artists to, to export. Um, only lately we have created programs with the Adam Mickiewicz Institute, for example, which um, funds uh, artists for going uh, outside of Poland to play. And uh, it, right now it is uh, very strongly uh, developing, but still, uh, I think, you know, uh, uh, when you compare to countries like uh, Hungary, Czech Republic, whatever, we are a bit behind. So if you ask any of Romanian artists if, if he's ready to, to go international, the answer will be yes, without giving like a, a second of thought. But um, if you would have asked me this question, I don't know, five years ago, I would have said no. Uh, our showcase festival uh, at MMB has done a lot to improve that. We've shown artists that um, you have to be export ready. We are right now, uh, we have organi the organizers of MMB, uh, we, we have an association, it's called Raw Music, and we are actually right now in the process of forming the first uh, export office, the Romanian, first Romanian export office with the mission of exporting Romanian bands. But um, MMB has been around for five years. We've made friends with uh, a lot of people in a lot of conferences, and so we helped Romanian artists in an unofficial way to become um, uh, included in the lineups of showcase festivals around Europe. Live at Heart, we, we've had artists here uh, last year. We've been to Bush, we've been to uh, Nouvelle Prague, Reperban, and so, um, yeah, it's, it, Romanians are, un, are finally understanding that just to admit that you're export ready does not mean that you are ready, and they are learning what to do about it, and we're ready to help them. Okay. Um... In my opinion, uh, there's few acts in Lithuania who is able to, to go uh, international, in, in Europe at least. Uh, but regarding showcase festival game and uh, all the things which is happening with export offices idea and the team behind it, it's not enough to play a few festivals during the year. It's, it's not enough. You need to have a really strong team behind your band if you want to have at least mini tour in Scandinavia. I don't know anyone from Lithuania who did a tour in Scandinavia instead of metal bands, which is different scene and different rules. And to be honest, we don't have any Lithuanian act, live act, who is um, uh, able to tour Europe. Uh, we have some electronic acts, which uh, is famous in Europe. One was too much famous. I don't know if you heard the story. 
one guy was dropped from the festivals and from all the agencies. He was signed by Paradigm Agency, Code in London, and one post on his personal Facebook page about um, how to, uh, uh, homophobic post on Facebook was killing his, his career from, from, from legend to zero. He's dropped from the business because of that post on his personal Facebook page. He was on BBC Radio 1 list, top 10 list, Lithuanian act. He was playing the festivals such as Ten Walls, Tomorrowland, uh, Cranfields, and big, big, big names. So it's, it's the story not for only our industry, but for everyone, because it, it was really crazy. It, was, it happened a few years ago or something. And now we have one guy who did a, how to say, a, not a remix, but uh, using the sample of one uh, legendary artist, Gigi D'Agostino, and that song is, uh, did, a, sorry, uh, did a many millions streams on Spotify and everything. He signed all good agencies around him, the label and everything, but he's 19 years old kid who used the sample of old act, and that's it. When he was booked for one international festival, he even uh, are not able to play DJ set. So it was so funny. Uh, talking about the export, uh, I believe we need to more experienced managers or something because we have only 10 people who is doing business in international level. And I'm one of, of these guys, so it's hard. I really would like to see more Lithuanian acts uh, on European tours or something. And when I do a shows in my country, I put Lithuanian Act as support act for headline shows. And this is my live music platform for local talent. Yes. Uh, I personally, I'm really optimistic about the ability of Hungarian Act uh, breaking through internationally. I think it's going to happen in the next couple of years. It's down to a number of factors. First of all, the acts themselves. I have to say, I see more and more clued up really uh, professionally uh, aligned, focused young guys coming through who really want to make a career in music, make an international career. They speak good English, they, they're clued up about musical trends, they know what it takes and they're the, they've got the determination. And I see more and more of this. Uh, secondly, I can say Hungary has a fairly robust export operation going on. It's down to basically one guy and his team, David Bolli. He's a super cool guy. I think he's done a lot for Hungarian music in the past like five years. Uh, Hungarian government or the Cultural Fund of Hungary is giving out grants uh, for a lot of programs. You can apply for uh, recording your first album, music video, you can, uh, you can get uh, uh, funding for touring. You can get funding for a manager like me coming here uh, or going to other showcases. So that helps a lot. And there's been a lot of uh, vitality thrown into the scene because of this. And maybe thirdly, I can say we also lack good uh, and professionally advanced knowledgeable managers. But that is also changing. And I hope that uh, the kind of uh, activities we are trying to do with uh, organizations like the Music Managers Forum, like the Hungarian Impala organization for indie labels, is going to help. And, uh, uh, you know, just things like uh, our own showcase festival, Bush, and the other programs we have in Hungary are also helping a lot, I think. Yeah. Boy. Thank you, Peter. Oh, what Peter said is entirely true. I've actually seen uh, a few Hungarian acts at showcases and I've booked and promoted them in Sofia. So all these structures that he just listed are extremely important as to giving not only other artists in the area, other artists in the country kind of uh, a, a clue, you know, a leg up on the industry and, and how to work a career. It's also, it serves as a good thing for us promoters to say, okay, these guys got their stuff in order. So if I work with them, I know that everything's going to be as, as good as it can be. Uh, well, I'm sitting at the, at, at the end and pretty much I'm bringing you to the end geographically. I know we have a colleague from Macedonia who's sitting there as well, so she can chime in on that later in a private conversation with you guys, but Bulgaria is geographically more or less screwed. 
because we're f essentially far away from anything. Uh, You're close to Romania. We're close to Romania. We're about six hours away from you, man. Uh, which is good. That's a, yeah, there you go. So the issues pile up. Uh, there are not that many people that are active in the international scene. There's two, and most people probably seen only me. I've been sort of playing the lone warrior uh, game for about seven years now. It's getting a little tiresome, I have to say. So um, I'm hoping that somebody will be just as inspired as I am to come and meet uh, all our colleagues from different countries and kind of we can work together with them, but that unfortunately hasn't happened yet. We've had a good placement. We've, had, we've been lucky with a few artists at Eurosonic, at, uh, at uh, MMB, of course, and some other festivals to kind of be recognized you know, for their talents and for their efforts. But that is yet to bear the fruit that we wanted to bear. Government programs have just started providing some sort of level of support in terms of mobility, uh, creative development, the way they're calling it, which was someone to come here, but definitely not enough to go on a tour. You can probably go and do one date somewhere, but there's definitely not enough money for a tour. So everything is still DIY and everything is directly out of pocket uh, from the artist and then from the manager side, which me. Um, We've had some, I've had some success with putting artists in really, really big festivals, and one, one was a success and the other one backfired. I put an artist in Glastonbury, one of the stages at Glastonbury, which effectively broke up the band after that because they said, we're not going to do any better than this, might as well quit. Okay. <laughs> Let's end it on a high note. That was <laughs> nice, yeah. And, but the band that I brought this year was so inspired by the whole event at Glastonbury. If anybody hasn't been, I assure you, it's one of the most wonderful experiences in your life, even before you hit to the drug stage. And um, that band got so inspired by the environment, they performed one of their best shows, so much that they called them back. They said, yeah, yeah, you can come back and perform. And Glastonbury has over 100 stages, so to find a place at Glastonbury is a great honor for us. Yeah, we do mean that. And uh, you know, getting to work with some of the people there. So it's a, it's a bit of an uphill battle because of our geography and because of our lack of support, but we will keep trying. There's a lot of good talent in Bulgaria, a lot of, a lot of homegrown good talent in a variety of styles. And yeah, I'm hoping for the best. So we, we turn the questions around because now we were talking about export and, uh, then, and there's a lot of new, new things. But we turn it around because there's a lot of artists that are probably here wanted to enter market. So what's your mini plan to, if, if, if I get the idea that I, yeah, I want to I wanna enter the Bulgarian market. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's the Bulgarian market, again, geography is a problem, so you have to get to us first. Um, if you are an unknown act, as Dan pointed out, in our territories, that's really a... No, the most, you need an unknown act. We, have Sorry? Own, we only have one headliner here. So oh, I see, very so, good. So, so take, take an unknown act. Very good, so it's always unknown. Uh, what I personally would do is I would, I'm actually in conversation with a few artists that I've met at conferences over oh, months, we've been talking about months, what's the best way for them to enter the market? And is it one good way is essentially be a local support to another major artist coming in. The other thing is actually to become part of the tour of that particular artist and for me to book that artist and sell it in my market, knowing that that artist will generate enough interest and cash so that we're not just doing it for the fun of it. The other way is to, if you want to go, kind of, if you want to do a grassroots thing, I can provide you with information about all the clubs in Sofia, which is our capital city, which is where people have the, much, the most spending power. And you can approach one or two of these venues. It's easy because four venues are controlled by one man and the other three by another, and there's me. And then you go to the arena, so it, there's not a lot to go around. But, um, what, what I would suggest is essentially partner up with a promoter, get a conversation with that particular promoter that essentially your, your partner is in that particular production. Get to know as much about the country as possible, do some research, say, we know that our style fits in your town because we've seen this and this and this other artists have been there. As one band came yesterday to me and I said, I know we'll work because these bands work as well. I said, well, you've done your homework, good. Let's just talk about dates. Fantastic, so the band has already done their homework, so the only thing I have to figure out is how to promote them best, what channels do I use. And uh, I can, just to, just to sort of open a bracket about essentially media channels, YouTube, it's all a mixed bag. I can't rely on any of them individually. It has to be television, Facebook, YouTube, whatever else is necessary, including handing out flyers sometimes. But I'm lucky that my new venue is owned by a corporation and we have, uh, we, the, the, it owns a chain of grocery stores, 46th of them. And so 
any band that I put on in my venue that's big enough to put on, it, 180 people, 180,000 people a day are going to see that poster in those stores, which is something that I've been working toward for 10 years. So hard work pays off, hopefully, <laughs> in the long run. So that's it. Start really small and try it. If you can get 20, 30 people interested, if you can get them on board, then you can, you can build. It's a very organic build. I can't put on a band to support a bigger artist because that usually people don't show up for the support act, they just show up for the headliner, or they have, sometimes they have a negative reaction to that support act. They say, why is it a foreign band, why is it not us? Because you guys don't even have a writer, you know, it's very difficult to work with you. So I prefer to take a band from Romania to support uh, a band that I'd like to do because I know they'll be perfect. They'll work stylistically and people will be happy. And in, in my, on my side of the industry, the people have to be happy. I, my happiness comes secondary. In Hungary. Uh, again, being the optimist, I have to say two things that uh, Hungary has got going for itself is reflecting on what you said, Boyan, a geographic location, definitely. So we're smack in the middle, uh, which means if you ever commit to going and uh, trying your luck in Eastern Europe, Budapest is a, is a great place to start. You can then go on to any direction and you're going to uh, might, you might be able to book some, some uh, gigs in, in the neighboring countries. Uh, secondly, uh, when I was first talking uh, today, I was sort of giving you a snapshot of the scene, but I would rather give you a trend. So m in my experience, the scene, the m market is expanding. The live market is definitely expanding. You can see that with festivals, it is no coincidence that uh, Siget uh, Festival, the company, has been acquired, 70% seven, of it has been acquired by a, a US-based private equity firm like two years ago. So that's an indication that uh, people with money smell money over there. And uh, you can see some uh, direct uh, effects of that. Siget just got bigger. I mean, it was big already, but now it's up to 500,000 people uh, <laughs> in a week, which is insane. The lineup has just got even, you know, beefier. They always had a good lineup, but now, you know, Ed Sheeran was in Budapest like two, uh, three weeks ago, so. But that's not for small artists. What I'm trying to say is more and more people are going to concerts, uh, more and more people are going to clubs. There's a good club scene in Budapest. Uh, let's not forget A38, which was voted the best club in the world by TripAdvisor is in Budapest. Uh, aquarium Club, uh, a bunch of smaller venues who also do programming with uh, international acts are in Budapest. The countryside is not that uh, uh, strong in terms of clubs, but then again the festivals I was talking about do seek out these smaller festivals. Uh, I've seen in the lineup everything from sort of Mexican death metal bands to Lithuanian, I don't know, electro uh, little plinkety bands. <laughs> and, and so there's a wide scene and it's getting wider. One good example I also wanted to tell you guys about is an open air venue in Budapest called Budapest Park. It's a huge venue, it's a 10,000 plus capacity. It's basically a festival that goes on for four months. So it, start, it opens in May and closes in September. Uh, I'm lucky that my band plays there regularly, my Hungarian band. But it also does a lot of programming uh, with international artists. And I can say it has just been, it's been growing and growing and growing throughout the years. Uh, the director of programming just told me last week that they have uh, surpassed 500,000 visitors last week since they've opened in like six years time. And I can say, I can see just, you know, a, sort of an anecdotal evidence of, of how the scene is evolving is that uh, we were the first Hungarian bands to ever to sell it out. That was like three or four years ago. Now there are a bunch, a handful of Hungarian bands who sell it out on a regular basis. Some of them sell it out two times in a row. <laughs> so 20,000 people, you know. So, yeah, that and uh, again, uh, try and focus on YouTube and maybe also Facebook, but YouTube is, uh, is where you can get your audience interested. Yeah. Okay, um, first of all, we have only one city where you are able to do a show. It's Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. Other cities, sorry, but doesn't work even for local acts, and it's, it's hard for, for me and for, for my industry. 
Uh, second thing is that uh, we have only few rooms and uh, clubs where you are able to do indoor show in Vilnius even in spring, uh, autumn, or fall, which is also complicated because in the summer you are not able to do any club show. It's too hot inside, so everyone is closing and uh, using uh, outdoor spaces or something. If you are a young band, a new band, as Peter mentioned, uh, first of all, you need to find the right band or management company or promoter who are able to help you to, to open the gates to Lithuania. And uh, my advice is to do something with Lithuanian content. For example, let's, let's do a cover of famous Lithuanian song or something when you will get the coverage of the media and some promoters definitely will be into it because it's, it's content. Content is everything. And for Lithuanians, even the band from Latvia or Estonia came to us to play, they doesn't care. It doesn't matter how good they are or something, they doesn't care. You need to have some, something in common together to make it happen. And uh, another thing is uh, band contest. We have one band contest which includes also international acts uh, for young and unknown bands. So it's a good platform because you are able to spread the word in three Baltic countries. It's quite small because they just started, but I believe it will be a good thing for, for, for everyone. So uh, the biggest advice is to, write, to find the right guy or girl yeah. to make it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Romania is uh, receiving large international acts open-heartedly and with open mar arms. We've had uh, Metallica and Ed Sheeran in Bucharest uh, this year. Uh, we've had Bon Jovi this year. So yeah, big, big names are, are visiting Romania. Of course, uh, that does not help you guys very much. But uh, we've had uh, venues that are uh, starting to import um, indie artists from uh, Britain, from around Europe. Uh, they are established artists in their genre, but in Romania they can get a following of about a couple of hundred uh, people steadily in the big cities that I've mentioned earlier. Uh, and um, to do so, a little bit of plugging, sorry for that as Peter said, uh, the best way to do it is just apply to uh, the showcases at MMB. And uh, I'm not full of shit saying that. Um, we had the Booker at Electric Castle book bands from our showcase festival. Uh, we've had uh, Peter book bands directly off the stage of uh, MMB for, uh, for Live at Heart here. Actually, it's a British artist, he's right over there. Uh, also, um, I can guarantee you that uh, while performing on one of the MMB showcase stages, you will have in front of you Romanian promoters from uh, promote, promoters agencies, but also uh, promoters from the venues that are actually importing artists. And venues like uh, Control, Expirat, uh, or Quantic maybe, are going to be uh, watching you and are going to be booking you. Also, um, another thing that uh, ensues if you, if you come to MMB are collabs. We've had a collab uh, between one very well-established Romanian artist and a Serbian artist, uh, and that resulted into them playing and composing and writing and, and singing together, but also touring in each, in each other's country, so that's also an option. I'm sure that Romanian acts, if you come, they're, they're going to be there, Romanian artists, so you can talk to them and you can arrange some kind of exchange, you know, you tour in our country and we'll take care of you, and then we'll, you do the same. Uh, these things can work because working with an established artist in our territory, it's not even a matter of headliner and supporting act. It's like two acts playing in the same night that are considered of the same caliber. Just one of them is international and has the, uh, the stamp of warranty from an established Romanian act. So all these are possibilities to conquer Romania. So I'll see you at MMB. Uh, regarding Poland, Poland is um, quite a diverse uh, country, and uh, uh, you know names like uh, you know Metallica, Depeche Mode play Warsaw, but they can also play like Krakow, uh, like Elton John did lately, uh, just missing out the the, the rest of the cities. And uh, if you wanna, as an unknown band, come to Poland. Um, 
Of course, you can go with DIY, for example, the Polish Music Export Office. You can go on a website and you can find a list of clubs uh, and venues with uh, uh, emails, contact numbers and names. And you, can, you can do that. Uh, you can do your homework and you can do it yourself. Uh, you can do it uh, through, for example, Spring Break, right? Uh, yeah. Peter is, uh, uh, has, uh, has been there many times. Uh, it's a showcase festival in Poznań, right? You can apply there. Uh, or you can find uh, uh, a promoter agency in, 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 in Poland and do it you know, that way. So there are many, many possibilities. But uh, actually the, the market is very diverse and something that, which is happening in the north in the Tri-City or Szczecin uh, doesn't mean it can happen in the south, like in the Silesia or uh, Wrocław, for example. Wrocław is a very uh, reggae-based uh, region, right? Silesia is more like blues. Uh, Krakow is more hermetic. It's uh, like, uh, it's, it's a country within a country. They, the, the clocks work, you know, in a different way there. Uh, uh, and, and for example, um, uh, the, the North is more of a, like a, an alternative in jazz scene. But um, uh, there are really, really many possibilities. All right, we are getting out of time. And uh, one of the things that to have this one was that uh, Boyan said to me once that they are throwing napkins in Bulgaria. And so I was, and they do it in Romania as well. Do what? In Romania? Yes, they throw napkins. Uh, and the, I, and, and the, I never uh, seen it, I, and I looked for it on the internet, and Boyan has been, been persistent that he will show us. So he actually bought napkins and the shot that you have out here. So now we're going to actually see how you throw napkins. And that's what you're doing on, in the Bulgarian, if you like the band. Before I tell the story of the napkins, uh, I have to mention that there's another conference in Eastern, in Eastern Europe called PIN, which is in Macedonia. You guys should check that out as well. It's a really, really good vibe. And Skopje is a wonderful place. Yeah, so that's something else that should be on your calendar. Since you're going to go down the geographical rabbit hole, you might as well go for the whole thing. So, uh, and you, can also, you can also check Nouvelle Prague in Czech Republic. It's yes, of course. Festival. Of course. Uh, so the, the napkin thing, it's probably the Bulgarian version of making it rain, since there's not that much money to go around. But then again, a tray of napkins does cost 100 euros at some of the bars. So obviously these people have money. The, uh, one of our biggest impediments, the biggest, the biggest enemy to rock and roll, or to whatever you want to call it, the rock and roll spirit in Bulgaria, is a bastardized form of pop folk music, which we call chalga. Chalga is a Turkish word for instrument, but in Bulgaria it's a no word, no chalga. Even when you read about Joy Station, at the bottom it says no chalga, never. You know, that's our motto. And so this particular style of music features highly surgically enhanced individuals, most likely women, with singular names, Maria, Dorothea, Lina, Mina, Shmina, nothing. And so while these women are parading themselves and singing this sort of straight 4-4 music, folk music, the older gentlemen or the younger gentlemen or whatever like to buy a tray of napkins and just throw them in the air as a sign of appreciation. So the Greeks break plates, we throw napkins. So it's easier to, it's easier to clean up and so, so now, now we're all going to do it, so you better have your cameras ready. All right. Oh my god. <laughs> Are these the 100 euro variety? Right. I, only, I only use the 100 euros, you know? Okay. We have to stand up. Okay, we have to stand up. <laughs> I'm going to stand up. I will do it. We're going to count to three. Right. Should we do that? Okay. Am I going to count? Should I count in Bulgarian? In no. Bulgarian. Right. Edno, dve, three. <laughs> and that's how you party in Tokyo. Thank you so much. And uh, we are ending this panel. And see you in about. 10 minutes in the next one, and you can talk to these guys about your future. Oh, Peter. Yeah, before we go, just one last plug. I just, uh, speaking of cool Hungarian bands, I just uh, saw two of them in the, in the room today.
please say hi to them. Mary Pop Kids is sitting over there and Mira Monaco behind them. They're both performing tonight. Uh, go and talk to them. They're cool people and uh, we'd love to see you at their shows. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>